So we're talking about uh, conversion complications, and this is a fraught uh, subject, you could imagine. You know, if we got a person who, out of his own volition, 100%, because of no ulterior motive, wants to become a ger, and he goes and prepares in yeshiva, and then he has Mila, Trila, Kabbalah's mitzvahs. No, there's no one more holier, no one that I'm more envious of, and no one more that I respect. There's no, no question about that. But the problem is that the chuvas from, voluminous amount of chuvas about when a boyfriend comes home from college, he met a uh, blue-eyed, blonde here shiksa. The parents, for whatever reasons, even though they obviously failed in their education of their kid, wants, um, wants a Jewish uh, maid, a Jewish daughter-in-law. They don't want their old aunt to have conniptions. And of course, the father of this... Uh, Young man is the president of the shul and supports 80% of the community. And he comes to the Orthodox rabbi and says, you're going to convert this girl for me, aren't you? And this is like, this is like our rabbis, the, the rabbi straight out of Koilo, straight out of like Nehru Yisrael rabbinical school. And he's all uh, altruistic and all the Shem Shemayim. And he's presented with this situation. What is he going to do? Right? Uh, this is my Sim Shibi Uh There are many variations of the same type of Shaila. We have an Eric to throw now because of the many of the, uh, the Russians who have come over. Um, they're all wonderful people, obviously, but some of them, or many of them, are not religious and not Jewish and they want to become Jews for ulterior motives, per se. They want to have certain rights from the government. And they want to be able to marry whoever they want. As we know, in Israel, the rabbinic runs the uh, department of who can get married, who can't. So they also are for ulterior motives. But even though one can declare, which I know of a Herzog, the Rav Rashi, the Tzal did clear, if you want to come to Eretz Yisrael, is that called ulterior motives? Maybe that's not called ulterior motives. That's called, you want to be like a Jew? I say a person wants to become a Jew because, you know, he likes Cholin, and he likes uh, the Shul Club, and he likes um, the Kiddush Club, and he likes the whole Jewish scene. It's not so clear that's ulterior motive. It's not so clear. But a lot of them don't really want to come to Eretz Yisrael. They just want to leave their country that they're in. Maybe not the greatest fans of Putin, especially nowadays, right? So they want out, um, and they really don't have the shame shemaim. So you have these questions. What do you do? Same question. You know, don't make them gayrim. Well, they're all going to be marrying. A lot of them will be marrying real, 100% Jews. You know, they're here, and they're intermingling with us. So if, if they're goyim, there's going to be a lot of intermarriage. It's going to be with their children. These are questions that are very difficult to grapple with, and there's no simple answer. Uh, recently, I did hear of a story of a, of a Balchuva, a real Balchuva, who basically was abandoned by his family, and he had a erstwhile, an old uh, girlfriend, Gentile girlfriend that he dropped a long time ago, and he reconnected. And uh, basically, she also wanted to do... Uh, uh, become a gear, but over here was a wasn't like our aforementioned story of a of the boy who went to college who wasn't religious at all. He was very religious. You have many variations of this same type of shiloh. Oh. So there are three major issues when we come to these type of shilohs. One, two, and three, and we have to know that these issues are totally separate. And many people conflate them. 
and we have to attack each one separately. We will not have time to go through all of them today. But let me just say what the three issues are. Issue number one. It's an open Gemara in Yevamis that talks about someone who becomes a ger not for not for L'shem Shemaim, but for ulterior motives. It says here, Echot Ishin Iskaya L'shem Isha, this is the Brisa, a man who became a ger for a woman. I mean, not L'shem Shemaim, but he, for whatever reasons he knows he can't marry the woman unless he becomes Jewish. Same thing, a woman for man. Someone became a ger because of Shulchan Malachim. In the time of Shleim Melech, it was very advantageous to be a Jew. You got a good paying job, right? Shleim was on top of the world. You wanted to be part of the Jewish uh, nation. So someone, in those, you know, he didn't really care about Shem Shemayim, but he wanted a good paying job. Rabbi Nehemiah famously says, they're not, no game. They're not game. If they did it for ulterior motives, they're not game. the game because of the lions. We all know the story of the Samaritans, that they became game because they were attacked by lions, but they didn't really believe in the whole entire, um, they didn't really believe the same Shemayim. And the game of Mordechai and Esther, we know after, uh, the victory of Mordechai, the Pasuk says there openly that many of the Ami Arts Nithyadim, they became Jewish. So it says here, ain't a game. The Mechemi said they're not game. You either do it with Lashem Shemayim, 100%. You want to learn Gemara, you want to keep Shabbos, you want to go to Arzameach, you want to be from. No other toy you read if you're not, not you know, you, go, you don't got your, a woman in the peripheral, you don't got, not, nothing else is going on. If you do, not a game. The Gemara says, only game is Manazeh. The Gemara says, Manazeh? Only when the was alive? No, Kim is Manazeh, meaning when the Jews are downtrodden and there's no, nothing to be gained, at least financially, then it's called a Gerim. Fine. But the Gemara says, we don't pass it like a Rebbe We don't pass it like a Rebbe And halacha kedivri, I'm kulam Gerim hein. The halacha is at the end of the day, even though you did Gerim for not the most, uh, not, not the most greatest reason. You did it for ulterior motives. You are called Gerim. But the Gemara says openly, that's Bidyevin. The, the Bezdin definitely should not accept such Gerim. The Bezdin should not accept such people. And the Bezdin should do their due diligence. And if they feel that the the ger is not doing it the same shemayim, but for two months, shouldn't accept But if, post fact, if after the fact, the bezin did accept such people, they are called ger. Okay, that's that's problem number one. The Orthodox rabbi says, "Oh no, it says here I can't accept your girlfriend or boyfriend, or even by the baltuva, seemingly." Bottom line is. She or he is doing Geras, not L'shem Shemaim. Doing it for, doing it for ulterior motives. And it says here, even though B'dyeved, the Geras will be chal, but L'chathchili, you're not allowed to do it. So this is a, a serious impediment, okay? Number two, second problem. The Mishnah on this same Gemara says, Hanitan Someone who there was rumors that he had a connection to a guy. A fine Jew, there were rumors he had a connection to a guy. Says the Mishnah, even though the guy did Geris, Harzeloyichnos, and the Dindra Abun, you're not to marry her. The person, the Jew, who there were rumors about that on this Geiris, before she became a curious, they had some type of connection. You can't marry her. No. So what's going to be? The Orthodox rabbi says, what do you do? Okay, I'll make your girlfriend. I'll make your girlfriend the Jew. But you can't marry her anyway. You can't marry her anyway. It's an open, explicit thing. You're not allowed to marry a giyuris that 
you had some connection to before. The Mishnah says, "Im kanas a might see me other." No, no. If they got married illegally, we don't make them get divorced. Because but because they're bottom, right? Right. Now, why is there this? Why is there this drabbanon? The Gemara asks, "Why is there this drabbanon?" So no, it, the the Amar Reb Asi lazus for sign because. There's going to create tremendous rumors. As a homachal, you what this means. But Rashi learns it means people are going to say, "Aha! Look at that! Stacy became Sprinza, and all of a sudden Yaakov is marrying her. But why is Yaakov marrying her? And they're going to do a little research. They're going to find out that Yaakov had some type of relationship with with with, with Sprinza slash Stacy. It's going to cause terrible rumors. Tab. The tabloids are going to be r- r- running, r- running extra hours. And we don't want that. We don't want this, these rumors to be spreading. That's fine. That's fine. It's only when the Jew had a connection with the guy, then even though... But in that case, if when the, the two guys had a connection, there was nothing wrong with that. And then had a connection? That is the problem. Same problem. That is the same problem. That is the same problem. Yeah, usually if a couple... Yeah, that is that the same problem. So that's impediment number two. So impediment number one is you can't make this girl a gear or boy a gear because of the ulterior t- motive. Problem number two is even if they somehow or other beat the system and they do become a girl like we pass on your bottom, you can't marry her because of this open Mishnah. Hanitan al shivcha of the is the same thing as about a a shift of Kananis that became free, and you had a, a Jew who had some previous connection to her. So it seems like we have a uh, ser- serious, formidable uh, problem here. But then we have the biggest problem. These are small potatoes, because these are Darbanon at the end of the day. If they do get married, they are married. At the end of the day, if you do get them to the gear, it's a gear. But one of the requisites of becoming a gear is Kabbalah's Hamitzvah. You got to accept the mitzvahs. And we all know the famous Gemara. It, 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 it delineates exactly the gear comes to the Bezdin. And the Bezdin says, why in the world would you want to become a gear? Yo, you don't like cheeseburgers anymore? What's going on with you? Don't you know that Yisrael, Bizman are, are despised and they are considered despicable and they're not respected and they're hounded with, with suffering? And he says, I don't care. The Gare says, I'm a Stoic. I'm all for it. And then they tell him some of the mitzvahs, some of the mitzvahs kala, some of the mitzvahs chamuris, and they tell them some of the own chim. And they tell them that you can't eat chalev and you can't eat, sh- you gotta keep Shabbos. And they tell them this skila. And they tell them about the mitzvah of stucca. Out of all the mitzvahs, one of the mitzvahs of stucca they tell them about. And they tell me, you know, while you're a guy, you're all, you don't gotta worry about any of this stuff. Are you sure you wanna do this? And he says, yes, I do. So the Gemara says, okay, you don't gotta go any further. You told them some of the mitzvahs, you told them some of the various. Right away, do the bris milah. You gotta wait a little bit, then do the trila. And when you do the trila again, you tell him some of the mitzvahs and some of the various. And again, he says yes. So it's pretty clear. There's a concept, which is, makes sense, that the ger has to do kabbal the mitzvahs, accept the mitzvahs. And there's an open gemara in Bechiris, open gemara in Bechiris, that says, The Gemara of the Bechiris says openly. Uh, it says here, someone who wants to become a ger, and he says, "Yeah, I want to become a ger. No problem." There's one thing I. I got one, I got to hang up with one thing, right? 
I, I really don't understand the shotness business. You know, I really can't stand. Everything else is okay. Ain't the Kabbalah site. It's not called Kabbalah Zagaris. Rabbi Yossi says, I feel dictic echem and siphon. Even a seemingly easy means of Durabanon or even a, a, a drasha. So it says it quite explicitly. Not only does it have to be Kabbalah Zagaris, there has to be a Kabbalah Zagaris on all 613 mitzvahs. So, comes our guy back home from college whose father is not very religious. They don't keep Shabbos. They don't keep Tzitzit and Shabbat. The kid is definitely not keeping any of this stuff. The girl who just wants the father-in-law's money, that's all she wants. She'll say, hey, yeah, I'm sure I'll be Jewish. Why not? You know, she, she knows she doesn't mean anything. You know, she's not going to keep Shabbos or anything. So what, what? How is this our Orthodox rabbi who just came out of Orla Gola Rabbinical School <laughs> and he needs this president to support him? You know, this, what is he going to do? How is he, how is he going to, what type of, what type of Kabbalah submits has he got over here? This thing's a farce, right? Oh. So, let's see if we could sort of get out of some of these issues. Is there something we can do for the situation? Now. I agree, I, maybe next year I'll talk more about the first problem and the second problem. But the, at least for the first problem, at least for the Balchuva who has a girlfriend and wants to make her a girl, maybe we can get out of the first problem. What was the first problem again? You can't marry, you can't become a girl for ulterior motive. For ulterior motive, you now become a girl. Bezin is not supposed to accept you. It works with the Oh. But already Toys was there in Yavamas asked some questions. Toys says um, that we have a famous Gemara in Shabbos of Hill. We have, the, everyone knows these famous Gemaras of Shabbos when it compares Hillel to Shammai. Famous story how Hill was so humble. And we have there, we're introduced to the famous story of Hillel and Shammai, the three gears that come to Hillel and Shammai. So, one of the stories are, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes, a guy, a, a, a guy comes to Beit Shammai. I want to become a gear. Beit Shammai says, wonderful. Uh, how many Torahs do you have? Well, we got two, Torah Shabbat Shabbat Torah Shabbat Gear says, no, 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 I'm not into Torah Shabbat Peh. I'm not sitting all day learning a Forget about it. It's not happening. I'm not into no Torah Shabbat Peh. So Beis Shammai basically gave him the boot. Hillel made him a gear. No problem. And it says the next day Hillel started teaching him Aleph Beis Gimel Dalit. And the next day he said Dalit Gimel Beis Aleph. And the gear said, wait, why are you changing your mind? So Hillel says, listen. You trust in me, trust me all the way. At the end of the day, eventually the Gare accepted everything. But originally, he said he's only taking Torah Shebek That's one Gemara. Then we have the famous Gemara, we're not going to get involved. He said, teach me, the Gare came to Shammai and said, teach me all of Torah on one foot. Again, Shammai beat him up with some Amas Abinion, he with some type of uh, walking stick. And Hill said, don't worry. And what did... And what did Hillel teach him? The golden rule. What's the golden rule? Right? He that has the gold rules. No, that's not the golden rule. The golden rule is the hachlareicha kemoicha. Okay. Then we got another story. We're going to go talk about these stories. But the third one is that um, uh, a guy was walking outside of Beit Merish and he heard about the choyshen. He heard about the choyshen and the aphod. And he said, wow, that's, that, that's, that's a pretty... Uh, Cool get up, I would like that. He goes over to Shammai, he says, I want to become a gear. He says, Yeah, why? Well, I want to become a Kayan Guddle. I heard they had some pretty snazzy clothes. <laughs> Shabai, you could imagine, did it gave him once again the booth. And Hill said, No problem. And he made him a gear. And of course, he taught him at the end of the day that you can't be the Kayan Guddle. And the Gemara ends off at one day, the three Gairim who are big, big Tamilicham now, is big Payas and Strimals. We're sitting and having lunch together, and they all said, us, oh, if it was for Shammai, we all wouldn't be sitting here today. Thank God for Hillel. And that's why we're all here, all from, and living happily ever after. That's the Gemara. The famous Gemara of Hillel and Shammai. We learned this in kindergarten. 
this is what we learned, right? And we learned here to be humble and to have patience, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Tyson says one thing: whatever Hillel did, he's not going to go get the halacha. Obviously, he's not going to go get the halacha. Clearly, so says Tyson. At least the story here, Tyson says, we're we're we contacting the first issue that you can't become a gear for ulterior motives, and if you do. We don't want, the Bezin should push you off. It works with the Ebed, but Bezin does not uh, readily accept you. So how did he hold? This guy said black and white, I want to be a Kayin Gadol. So is that a Tyrion motive? That sounds like a Tyrion motive. He doesn't even say because he you know, wants to be Kabanas. No, he says, I like the threads. I, I like this nazi. Imagine me in the club with the, with the, with the, with the, with the Urum Atumanam and the Chayish Shemishpat, right? That's what he says. So, Sfek Toysvis. So how did Hill accept him? The not supposed to. Says here, Hillel knew that the end of the day, which we see at the end of the day did happen, that he could convince the Shem Shemayim. Then we bring the famous story. I don't have it. I read the Menachis. The famous story in Menachis that there was it's hard to understand, but some yeshiva guy paid a lot of money to, uh, to hire the services of a harlot. Gemara says he traveled very far and paid a lot of money. And I'm not going to go through the whole description. At the last minute, he desisted. He saw his titsis. And since he saw his titsis, he sort of had an, a, uh, he had a, a hero tshuva. And the, 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 the prostitute, the harlot, was so impressed that she decides to sell everything, goes to the base medrash where this guy is, and basically tells Khanina, I want to become a ger, this, and this is a beautiful girl, woman, obviously, I want to become a ger, and I want to marry this guy. And Rechina says, no problem. And there's a big chasana, and Rechina gets up and says, Adrasha, and says, you know, you thought you were going to have it through Isra, now you got it through Heter. I don't know why I had to mention that about the share brothers, but that's basically, <laughs> what, that's basically what the, the Gemara says. Yeah, you thought you were going to, you were going to do it to Isser, and now you got a Peheter, and Inve Gef, and Inve Gef. But the bottom line is, what do you see from that story? She, again, was L'chair for ulterior motive. So there, Tyson says the same thing. No, it depends. There's ulterior motive, and there's ulterior motive. There's ulterior motive that is clear like day. This person has, doesn't care about religion at all, doesn't care about God at all. There's no chance. All she wants is to marry the guy, Want, really wants the guy's fa- the father's money. She wants a credit card to do whatever she wants for her life. But there are certain cases, i.e., like our Balchuva case, where he's very serious, and the Besman can see that the girl is not only attracted to the boy for because he's male, but also because of what he represents, being Jewish. So there is a uh, avenue for the Besman to say, no, we think this will be Lashem Shemayim. So even though it looks ostensibly like a two motive, but if Bezdin could ascertain and figure out and think, not through Ruach HaKodesh, but basically uh, profiling, we think that at the end of the day, she'll be Shem Shabbos, and she'll be Shem Shemayim, and she'll be Love God, then you could do it. So by the Balchuvah cases, most of will employ this uh, Shem Shemayim, that she's probably Shem Shemayim. She's probably Shem Shemayim. Uh, but obviously it doesn't help our, our college boy who's not religious, it's very, it's, it's, it's impossible to say that the, the girl will be the same as right? Hillel, in his greatness, said, this guy's willing to take Torah Shibik Sav. He was willing. He, whatever, Torah Shibik, Torah Shibik Sav. Or this guy, he understood that he wanted the Big Day Kuna not just for being flashy. Hillel was able to ascertain that. Okay, now, there are many more things to say about the first issue. There are many other, more heterium, how we can get on the first issue, when you can, yes, take a gear for heterium motives, but we can't go there now. It'll take too long. Uh, the second issue, we're not going to go either today now. You know, what's the second issue? Well, once you make her a gear, it doesn't make a difference. You can't marry her anyway. The main problem is the third issue. Because that is the main problem. That's like, that's the rice that comes from it. Oh, so now. L'chayra, in that same Gemara of Hillel, we have the pro- it says you have to have Kabbal for mitzvahs, and it seems the problem is there's no open Gemara, it's a thousand percent, but it seems that you have to accept a hundred percent 
and it seems that that is likuva, that that is a must, that's not negotiable. So back to square one. How did Beis Hill take this guy who said, I'm only willing to take Torah Shebek Sav? That, that Torah Shebek is a big part of the Torah, right? How, how did Hill do that? How in the world did Hill do that? So we have to know. The Marsha asked that question. And he actually says something fascinating. He says Hill didn't make these people gay. He, uh, he, he argues basically on, on, on the you just mentioned. He says Hill did not make them gay. So what does it mean? It just means Hillel accepted them into Gare school. When it says that Hill Gare, it means there's a law. You can't teach a guy Torah. But the Masha says a big Yiddish, not like a Mickey Vager, that even though you're not allowed to teach a guy Torah, but to teach a guy to become a Jew, then you're allowed to teach him Torah. And that is what we all, everyone knows that that's what we do nowadays. Rabbi Mickey Vager vehemently argues them. He said, no, you can't teach a guy Torah. I don't care a second before he becomes a Jew. But we pass like the Masha. So Masha says that he, Hill never actually took them as a ger, only after he accepted Torah Shem Al-Peh. Only a, he also says by the Big Dekuna also. But only after Torah Shem Al-Peh. So it doesn't mean Hill Gire. It means he accepted him as a student. He accepted him as a uh, possible convert, and there, that gave him a heter to teach him Torah. Good. So we should know that. I'll be honest, and Rabbi Kivayeg argues, I don't understand exactly Rabbi Kivayeg, so if you can't teach a Gary anything before, so how does he know anything before? So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a good answer to that question, but I know we don't do that. I know we pass like this, Marshal. This is a Makar that we teach Gary and Tari even before they, everything. We teach Gary everything. We teach him everything. So he's Nasivis, whatever he wants to learn. We teach a Gary before uh, he becomes, while he's in the process. The truth is, Rashi himself asked this question. Rashi himself asks this question. No, he doesn't answer like the Masha. Rashi says, how does Beis Hillel accept this guy, this guy to be a ger? And he quotes the Gemara Bechayris. Rashi quotes the Gemara Bechayris. It's very fast. You usually don't have a Rashi like this. Like, it looks, Rashi brings, it's like a Tysus Rashi. How did Hillel accept? We need 100% Kabbalah uh, mitzvahs. And this guy was the 50 pence of the he wanted. Now what Rashi answers is not clear at all. All. He asked the question. He says, hey, how did he do that? And he says, that's why Beishami pushed him away. Because Beishami said like the B'chayim B'chayim. The Rashi seems to be answering, I'm going to say in my words, Hillel saw that this guy really wants to accept everything that's true. This guy wasn't like, oh, I don't like Torah Shavu'a even though God said it, I don't like it. No. He thought that the rabbis sort of concocted it. So since he believed, this guy said, I want anything that Judaism is true, I am willing to accept. He just felt at that point in time that Torah Shalom Peh was some type of extra credit type of thing, or it really was sort of like the rabbis, uh, for whatever reason, ulterior motives decided to make the Torah Shalom Peh. But Hill knew that this guy was genuine. So this is not called someone's not macabre. Why? But he says, because Hill knew that he would successfully convince him. Since Hill knew he'd be successfully convinced him, and he knew if he was successfully convinced him, he'd accept it. And how did he know that? Because he knew this guy was genuine. The guy was missing education, that's all. He was just uneducated. So even though the, the guy said, I am not accepting Torah Shem it's not like he said it. We don't, it's not like he said it. That's how Rashi answers this question. A bit of the mate. That's clear like day. No one could say, if you take a a, uh, seemingly, if you take this girlfriend who says, yeah, I'll become Jewish. Shabbos, I ain't keeping, I ain't keeping nothing. And the rabbis say, no, it's Shabbos, look, it's open in the Bible, you know. You know, something that's blatant, so you can't, you can't employ this het of the Rashi. It's, so basically, this het, this het the Rashi is very peculiar, it's very singular, only by this one case, where this unusual girl who is genuine, doesn't want to accept everything. He just needs a little convincing what everything is. Okay. Now, so, but we have a problem. What's our problem? We got to try to get this, uh, we got our orthodox rabbi. Our orthodox rabbi is going to lose his job. You know, it ain't, it ain't funny. It ain't funny. He's losing his job if he does not let uh, this boy's uh, girlfriend become a Jew. 
Is there anything we can do about this? Why lose his job? Because the president who pays his position, who, who pays his uh, wages, is the father of this boy, right? So, can we do anything? Oh. So, now, the problem is, there seems to be a Rambam, based on the Gemara, that says the exact opposite of what we're saying. We're saying now, and I'll tell you, this is the, this is the end of the line, you need 100% Kabbalah for mitzvah. 100%. Every mitzvah, 100% Kabbalah for mitzvah. Okay. But, if you open up a Rambam, and we'll see where this Gemara comes from, Rambam says like this, Rambam says, Oh, yeah, you know, you, the, the whole Gemara, you tell the Kabbalah and Mitzvahs, and you tell her, you tell the Ger about Mrs. Kalas and Mrs. Chamuris. You know, the whole Gemara, the whole Gemara. But then he says over here that Ger Shaloi Batku Acharov, a Ger that the Bethan didn't do any, any due diligence about. Okay. We said it, we already said in the Gemara that. Even if you get, even become a gear for two months, it works with the even. Or shaloi hodiu ha mitzvahs for anshan, or you didn't tell him the mitzvahs or the anshan. Umarbo tov and a shloish hadyotis. Obviously, we're talking about not the most prestigious uh, uh, bezdin. Talking hadyotis over here because they, they messed up. They're supposed to do due diligence. They're supposed to tell him all the mitzvahs. How is a gear? He's a gear. I feel a night of Shibboshul Dovah Humaskar. And even though we know he did a ulterior motive, and even though we didn't tell him a word about the mitzvahs, Hoyul Umo Vitol, Vitoval, Yotzim Bechal Goy. He's not a Goy. Oh. What's going on over here? It says here black and white. This is like, this sounds good for our, our rabbi over here. It says they're black and white. Okay, the ulterior motive, we don't got to really talk about it. It says that you didn't tell him a word about the mitzvahs. You didn't tell him a word about, and it says here, black and white in the Rambam, you are a gear. Black and white. Black and white. So it's a stira. Everyone has a stira. What's going on over here? On one hand, we say, Kabbalah Samit, you must have Kabbalah Samit, you must have Kabbalah Samit. And here the Rambam says, you can make a gear, you don't tell him one word. You tell him, huh? Gary, yeah, come in, sure, yeah, well, Jewish, yeah, you get, sure, you get a pickle and a salami and a deli sandwich, just a, uh, that's all you tell him. Oh, Gary, good. He does a mila, tefillah, good. Oh. So, the consensus is what the Chem de Shloyme answered. He says, no, 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 no. There's two separate things here. You're mixing a mistake. There's Kabbalah's mitzvahs and Haidah's mitzvahs. There's two separate things. It doesn't say in the Rambam, that there was no Kabbalah mitzvah. It says in the Ram there's no Haidah mitzvah. Now, let me, re, uh, let me um, back up a minute. Where's the Rambam coming from? The Rambam's coming from an open Gemara in Shabbos. Where's the open Gemara in Shabbos? The Gemara in Shabbos brings a most unique case. Gemara talks about there, okay. The Gemara talks about over there, how many chattas you got to bring when you're Mechal Shabbos? How many chattas you got to bring? You know, the Gemara says, it's a, it's a Mishnah. Someone who doesn't know about Shabbos at all, a Jew, doesn't know about Shabbos at all, never heard of this, never heard of the institution of Shabbos. And he's been going for the last 40 years, Mechal Shabbos, five million times. He brings, very good, one carbon. One carbon. Because his mistake is, just one mistake. He doesn't know about Shabbos. And then the Gemara goes about someone who knows Shabbos, but he doesn't know which day of the week. Someone who knows that it is Shabbos, but doesn't know the Malachis. It goes through the whole list. Fine. So the Gemara there says, huh? A guy doesn't know about, what type of Jew doesn't know about Shabbos? What is that supposed to mean? Which Jew doesn't know about Shabbos in 40 years? And the Gemara says, it's talking about a ger who was misguided by Nachim. A ger who, I don't know how it happened, Toysa says there were randomly three head yoitis there, where Ebedez Ger lived, and three Lubavitches happened to be in the middle of Congo, I don't know where they were, and this guy, was, this guy said, yeah, I want to be a Jew, and then they left, so he just didn't know about Shabbos. 
So it's a, and the Gemara says he's a, he's a Jew. No question, he's a Jew. No question. You've got to be a Gemara Chatzel. So what are we seeing in that Gemara? There's a Ger who doesn't know about Shabbos. But what happened? How does he not know? It says he's got to make Kabbalah all the mitzvahs. What is going on over here? Shabbos is like pretty, pretty up there. So the Chem de Shloim, and this is where the Ram is coming from too. You're mixing two things. Kabbalah's mitzvah is Ma'akiv. He has to say, I accept God's word. I accept whatever Judaism says about what God's word A hundred percent. Now, it could be he has no idea what he's getting himself into. If the, if the uh, Bezdin is lax, if the Bezdin did not do the job and they didn't tell him what it's all about, that's okay. Bottom line is, it was a Kabbalah. Either the Kabbalah is that he says openly or by dint that he does the tefillah and they're telling him he's not becoming Jewish. It's understood that he's doing Kabbalah. But there is a Kabbalah. All the Rambam means that you don't need a Haidah. That's all. If the Bedna forgot to tell them, you know, the Shabbos and all that stuff, that's not Makiv. And that's the way the Shach learns. If you look at Shulchan Aruch, it's like amazing. The Shach says, Kabbalah for mitzvahs, Makiv. Next, next Shach. Oh, Haidah for mitzvahs, no big deal. So you see clearly there are two separate things. So you do need Kabbalah mitzvahs. You do need 100% Kabbalah for mitzvahs. And, and by the way, it makes sense. Because even when you do the Kabbalah, uh, even when you tell the Adonis mitzvahs, you tell them all 613, you'll be there all day. You're not there all day. All right? You're not there all day. You don't tell them uh, Ksais and the Nesivas. You don't sit there with the, you don't tell them, right? You, right, right, right. You don't tell a few. Right. So you, so you know you're not telling them everything. So clearly there's two separate things. But the Kabbalah has to be 100%. I mean, he says, I know I don't know what it's all about. I know there's a lot more to learn. But I accept that God gave, God created the world, God gave the Torah on Sinai, and I, 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 I uh, accept the Jewish interpretation of this, and it's 100%. So your guy can be 40 years not knowing that it's Shabbos, and he's still called a Jew. This is the famous Chem de Shleima Tantra. So we're back to square one. We're not good. We thought we were in a good, good stead with our... Our president, who's worth millions, but not very religious at all. We saw we in good stead, but no, because this girl, she knows there's something called Shabbos, and she, she knows what the situation, she knows kosher, she knows what Jews are supposed to do, she knows, and she still says, I'm not going to keep Shabbos, I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to keep Tzatz Meshbacha. I'm not doing any of this stuff. And she doesn't say it out loud. But, so, what type of Kabbalah's mitzvah is that? The guy who never heard about the mitzvahs, but he says, I 100% accept, accept 100%. Whatever you'll tell me, I'll accept. Very similar to like Hillel said, that he knew at the end of the day he'll accept it 100%. He just was not educated. But this girl, or let's say the Russians that are here now, I don't I mean Russians, I'm not disparaging Russians. That's not, that's not my point. The, the, the point is, the, the, the people who just become gay, they know. They see the Haredim. They know what's going on. They know what's going on. They know about Shabbos, but they don't want to do it. So how can you say that there's 100% uh, accepting? Oh, now. But wait. We have to figure out something fundamental here. So if we're saying you need 100%, you need 100%. So, so how is it possible? Look, we have another Gemara not like that. The Gemara says you're not supposed to accept gay for ulterior motive. Not for a man, not for a woman, not to get for marriage. But bottom line is it says it works with the oven. That's, that's open Gemara. If you accept the gear for ulterior motive, it works with the oven. Wait a minute. Isn't that a case of, isn't that a case where, that's our case, isn't that a case where someone's coming here for ulterior motive, so clearly he's not going to do the mitzvahs, and it says it works. So but we're back to square one. L'chair, we have an open Gemara that you do not need 100% uh, Kabbalah to mitzvahs. Because it says, if you accept a ger, who became a ger for ulterior motive, black and white, it says, see the ger. But on this, we most achroinim, and I can start listing here. Achiezer, Dvavra, Shlomo Zalman, and Moshe Sternbach. Everyone says the same thing. You're mis, you, you are misinformed, and you're not understanding the situation in the time of the Gemara. And they all base it on the Namuki Yosef here. The Namuki Yosef says, he asks this question. What's going on over here? 
you're Megayer, this man, because, but he's not doing it for Hashem Shemaim, he's doing it because he wants to marry some Jewish woman. So where's the Kabbalah from Mitzvah? He says, Agav, I'm say who come with Kabbalah. No. The man accepts it 100% the mitzvahs. I mean, let's go back a couple a thousand years ago, where there were no reformed Jews, there were no conservative Jews, and if you wanted to be part of the Jewish community, you had to act from. So you got this guy infatuated with this girl. Guy, do you care about the Judaism? No, don't know. What do you care about? I care about the girl. Okay, okay. you become a gay, yeah, I'll do anything for her. I'll do anything. Okay. At that second, when he becomes a ger, what is he thinking in his mind? What is he thinking? I'm not going to keep Shabbos? I'm not going to act like a Jew? Or is he thinking, I will act like a Jew? Clearly, says the Muki Yosef, he says, I will act like a Jew, because he wants to be part of the community. So even though in the good, in the good old days, when you got a ger for ulterior motives, that doesn't mean you are macabre 100% of the mitzvahs. It means you are macabre 100% of the mitzvahs for the wrong reason. But you are macabre 100% of the mitzvahs. 100%. Everyone. The, the biggest machmer. Rebbeinu Tam. You name it. No gebrox. 100%. You did it for the wrong reason. But you wanted the woman. What should you do? She princess the Hasidic girl. What are you going to do? You're going to do She's she, madly in love with her. What are you going to do? This is what all Zacharyanim explained. So let's, let's reiterate. Do you need 100% Kabbalah Mitzvahs? Repeat after me. You need 100% Kabbalah Mitzvahs. 100%. Every single last one. Every single last one. And we deflected all the Gemaras that seem not like that. No. Let's go. And, what are you going to do in our days? In our days, this girl comes to the Orthodox rabbi. There's no 100% Kabbalah Mitzvahs here. She is clear like day. Not going to keep Shabbos. Not going to keep anything. Her husband... Her intended is doesn't keep anything. So how could our our goal or rabbinical student except say there's a cabal of mitzvahs over here? Oh. But we ain't stopping. We gotta try to we gotta help this guy. He's gonna lose his job. We gotta do something for him. Maybe we could say, based on the Gemara conditions that you all learned, that no. That's that's not the pshat. That's not the pshat. Why? When you take a ger for ulterior motives, uh, we say it's a ger. Maybe it's not like the Muki Yosef, even though they say black and white. It's not that he, he does 100% want to keep the mitzvahs. Because in the good old days, that was the only way you could become part of society. No. Maybe he doesn't want to keep the mitzvahs. So how's it working? Well, we have the famous sugi called Dvarm Shebelev Eino Dvarm. Bottom line is, we all know the famous Gemara and Kedushin. Someone sells everything because he's making an aliyah. They call it an aliyah sale. But if you got to, and everyone knows that basically, but if you got to put up a sign, the aliyah sale, aliyah sale. And sure enough, things fall through. So he sold everything. He sold everything. And then everything, his plans to go to Eric Stoll fall through. Right? So he wants to, he wants to undo the sale. No. Can't undo the sale. Drone Shibale Veno Dvarim. Tyson says there, if he would have put up a sign, a Leah sale, he could have undo it. But he didn't do that. So here we go. That's the answer. Do you need a hundred percent do you need hundred percent cabals? Yes, you need a hundred percent. A hundred percent. So how could you take gear for tier motive? Or how could you take this girl who clearly won't keep Shabbos? And clearly, well, that's not what she says. Right before she dunks, she says, Yeah, Shema Yisrael, I love God, yeah, I'll keep Shabbos, yeah, I'll keep, yeah, I'll keep it all, yeah, I love the Jews. She says it, she says it. Drone Shibboleth, even though I know and you know and we know and everyone knows and she knows and the whole world knows the whole thing, the farts. She says it, she says it. So maybe our Orla Gola student can say, listen, I know you need 100% cabals. You need 100%. But she says she's doing 100%. So what should I tell you? She says, she says. Don't say that. Oh. So here, all the Akhredim say, ridiculous. Oh, excellent. First of all, many of them say like, Shammai. The drum has no, has no 
aspect when it comes to religious ceremonies. You know, let's say I'm davening, yeah, yeah. I say this morning, I say, but I have in mind uh, 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 Yoshki, or I have in mind uh, the Buddha. That's not a very good feeling, probably. Why not? I said the word, big deal what I have in mind. No, when it comes to a religious, a religious ceremony, religious acts, I always say drum shibboleth dvarm. Yes, like Shammai said, when it comes to a transaction between me and my friend, I sold everything. I didn't say it's going to go on air to throw. I didn't say, I didn't say. Drum shibboleth and dvarm. But tell me, Gairus, who is that between? Who is that between? You and God. Probably God can read your heart, right? That's, God is able to read your heart quite well, better than you can read it. So they say the whole count of drum shibboleth doesn't even apply. Doesn't exist. It says that Moshe and many others, based on the Gemara, Tysus of Kedushin, Tysus of Kedushin says, we all, we all, we all know Tysus, that it says, if you give away, you're on your deathbed, God forbid, and you say, oh, I give every, I have no progeny, you don't even say it, but you basically think you have no progeny, you give everything away, and lo and behold, a, son, a long lost son walks in, what does it say? Good? What does it say? No sale? Oh, well, why? It's drawing shibboleth. You didn't say anything about a son. But there's something that is so obvious, so obvious, so obvious, that's called umdun and the it's called drawing shibboleth shall call Adam. That, that's like explicit. Taste gives other cases, like shibboleth, we know the cases. We learned it. The guy's about to die, gives everything away, he gets better, he gets stuff back. But tell me, in walks in our. Uh, our blonde here, blue eyed g- g- girlfriend. She says, Yeah, come on. Yeah. She's chewing gum, you know, got tattoos, you know. Yeah, I, 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 got, I got to get out of here. I got to get to Macy's. Yeah, I'll jump into the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever you want me to do. Just, just get me out of here. Yeah, yeah. I accept everything. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep her beta time. Fine. It's under the demochich. Any sane person knows that this whole thing is a farce, a joke. So, we, so basically, we either have this, by the way, this is all. All of the, all not quite. It's amazing because none of this is really explicit in the Gemara. It's like all working this out. But they all say clear like they. They either say like Shammai, there is no drum shebelev, or they say like we're saying like Ramesha says. Many others. This, this is ridiculous. The Russians again. I'm not disparaging Russians. It could be anything. They're, just, you know, they're not. They're not. Everyone knows they're not keeping it. That's it. They know it's clear like day. Oh, so lechayra, we are in big trouble with our orthodox, with our YU or whatever, Neri Yisrael, Orlegola rabbi out there in the hinderland, in the boondocks and he's about to lose his job now are we going to be able to save this guy his job? <laughs> Not really but don't worry, come to our smack, you know we, we, have, we, 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 we always accept you over here but, uh, but before we go there, well before we go there uh Reb Moshe has a tshuva. There was a fine young, a fine woman who wanted to become a ger, wanted to become a ger, and she wanted to keep the mitzvahs. She had no boyfriend, no nothing. She had one hang-up. She had a very lucrative job, and she knew that she'd have to go to work on the second day of Pesach, Yom Tov Rabbanon. And she knew that that hopefully at the end she'll be able to eventually change, change that. But she knew in the near future she would have to uh, go to work on that day. Michal Yom Tashen. No. Lo and behold, she did the mikvah thing. She, she did the mikvah thing. She, she, right? She became very religious. Very religious. A couple years later, she goes to her mother and says, you know, I really feel guilty. I want to do, I want to do the gayers again. Because when I did the, uh, uh, the, the Tvila, I knew that I was probably going to be over Yont- on Yontav Shani, at least that one time. So here, Moshe says, first of all, we don't believe you. We don't, you know, you know, we don't believe you. you, don't, you, you a, a Judah can't, can't say I'm a guy. We don't believe you. Second of all, this is a short drum, I believe. This is a short drum, I believe, because the sure, the sure she was, a, she was a, a wonderful person who really wanted to become Jewish, and she was she was very uh, enthusiastic about it. So here's a short Drum Shibboli to say, oh, okay, but maybe Drum Slave, like Shammai said, maybe Drum Shibboli doesn't work, you know, by Gareth. But then Moshe says something outstanding. He says, even if we knew when she said it black and white, 
this that we say that someone has to accept 100% of mitzvahs, that doesn't mean if there'll be a couple of failures. If because of duress, you may be a failure. Y- yes, of course, you can't be Michal Yontif. And you have to lose all your money to be Michal Alav. But if someone says, I keep all 100% of the mitzvahs, but because, but we know, or she said, hopefully, because of a very uh, substantial financial loss, I will be over. That's not called, says Ramosha, she wasn't accepting it. That's not called. She accepts it with. And she knows that somehow, sometimes the Yetzirah will get her. A big kiddish. He says, I said, he says, tell me, says Ramosha. Let's say uh, a, 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 a guy, I want to be Jew, I love Judaism, I love everything. Givaldic. But Yarag I'm not going to give my life for it. I'm not going to give my life. Someone puts a gun to my head and, and, and bow down to the Yusky, whatever. So he's not a gear? But she says, sure he's a gear. Sure he's a gear. Doesn't make. I said you got to accept 100%. Yeah, 100% when it's not under duress. But if you're going to have a couple of fails under great duress, that's not called not accepting it 100%. Okay. Same thing. Chaim Oiz says the same thing. Same. He's even, he's even more makele. He says even if the gear knows that there's a good chance he'll have a bunch of failures, you know, and he knows in his mind there's a very good chance that he'll have a bunch of failures. That's no, every Jew has failures. Every Jew has failures. You know a Jew doesn't have failures? It's what they often. Chaim Oiz says, you can't say, well, I know I have a couple of failures. I won't keep Shabbos. I won't keep kosher. I won't keep uh, Tarsim Shabbos. No, no. That, that, that Chaim Oiz says black and white. No, that's not called failures. That's called total um, abrogation. That's called total not keeping anything. But here and there, you know, you may do this, you may do that. Don't worry about it. You're still called a kosher gear, okay? But, my friends, we have not solved our problem for uh, our, our Orthodox rabbi who needs to get this shiksa become a gear even though she doesn't care, give a hoot about Shabbos or anything, right? I, again, in the background, we have the other two issues also, but I'm not even going to that today because there are less issues. Is there a way? Is there a way? The answer is, my friends, sadly enough, according to most post game, there is no way. There is no way to save this guy his job. Reb Moshe has a famous tshuva. A guy from Winnipeg calls up Ramosha. Yeah, this, this lady got married to a, a guy who did one of these fictitious, uh, fictitious uh, gayers. And then, of course, he ran away. And now she's left. She, needs to, she wants to get remarried. Does she need to get, not need to get? Ramosha's there is like, he's like 99% sure she doesn't need to get. 99%. This guy's not a ger, there's no cabal of mitzvahs. He says, what are you going to say? Drum shabalim and advarim? He says what we all said here now. What are you going to say? Maybe that one minute, he had, a, he had an epiphany. Maybe that one second, when he went into the mikvah, he, you know, it's a very emotional a moment. Maybe. He says, the law is, let's say you have a shoychit, and it becomes a, a, pa- a pasta. Law is, he comes up, he shoychit, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock it becomes apostate. The law is, all the shechita before is kosher. From 12 o'clock is when he's an apostate. You don't say, oh, what do you see from there? It could be just, uh, we hold halakhali, the reversal could have happened in one second. It sounds a little bit crazy, right? 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock he's a chasidish, a kosher Jew, chasidish, a shechita, 12 o'clock the guy became a, a mummer. No, whatever he did until 12 is good. Ramosh said, maybe the same thing here. Maybe this guy, for that one second, had an epiphany and he really did want to become a macabre all 100%. And Ramosh said, that's ridiculous. The guy before was a, what, 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 what was a bum. The second afterwards, he's a bum. The, the, by the case by the Sheikh, we're talking about a guy who was from. And then it became apostate. But over here, this guy was a guy. And a second later, he didn't keep anything. So 99%, he says, is this Geiris is worthless. There's no drum shibboleth in a dvarim. There's no umdin in the mukhech. There's no kabbal geiris. He wouldn't matter just on that. He wouldn't do it. He said he had another thing going for him. And that should be another thing. The, the, we had it going. 
if anyone becomes a ger, when you already have a bris milah, you're supposed to do a tough as dam. It's a suffix if you have to, if you're a ger. Meaning, if you, uh, you were circumcised when you were goy, and then you become a ger, you can't do circumcision again. That would be pretty drastic, right? You can't do that again. So you do a tough as dam bris. But that is a suffix if you have to do a tough as dam bris. It happened to me in that case in Winnipeg, the guy refused to do a tough as dam bris. Whatever. He was scared of needles, I guess. And it, you know, it's just, so anyway, it's a sex faker. Probably he's not a gear. He didn't do a tough dam bris. Anyway. If you go through the chuvas of Ramosha, he's dealing with all of these. And again and again, it's the same vibe. Not Jewish. Oh, now, there isn't one chuva. In one chuva, he does say something to say maybe the, he, he's trying to help the Orthodox rabbi. And he's, it, what, what his wording is, well, those Orthodox rabbis that do it, maybe there's something I can say. It's too late. I can't get involved. Maybe next time, what his heter is. Oh. I just want to get to the, the, main, the main thing. On the other side of the street is the famous Rebbe Zil. Rebbe Zil was a Rav Roshi. A huge Talmud Chacham. So, you know these Friday Rav Roshis? They're like superhuman. Superhuman, these guys. They're like unbelievable. You read their stuff. It's unbelievable. They know everything. But Rebbe Zil, and it's very funny. Because I was by my shvere the Shabbos. I was by my shvere the Shabbos. And I mentioned to him, you know, I'm going to talk about Rabbi Zeal. He says, you know, let me tell you something about Rabbi Zeal. Rabbi Zeal ne- never left Eric Stroll. And he once went to Switzerland. And when he was going on his way to Switzerland, he was flying over the Alps, he burst out crying in the plane. And they asked him, uh, the student says, what's going on? What are you crying for? So Rabbi Zeal said, I knew the Jews were in goats. But I didn't realize how much beauty what there was in the Alps or in Switzerland that clearly should be by Eric Stroll, but because of weird gullus, the beauty has been put in Switzerland. That's why he burst out crying. I'm like, wow. And this chuva that he's talking, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Just yesterday, I opened chuva. I just came back from Switzerland. He writes that in the chuva. So it was exactly, it just, uh, that was pretty interesting. But basically, Rebbe Zil, pay attention, hold on tight. He says, no problem. You need a hundred percent Kabbalah submits a hundred percent but who says you got to keep it all right you know, you know like you know, I promise but who said I promise to keep my promise that's right that's meaning one. he makes this <laughs> he makes this distinction he says Kabbalah submits has nothing to do with keeping them he says he says Kabbalah submits is a is procedural he says yes we know it's a joke. We know it's a farce. We know they're not going to keep Shabbos. We know everything. We know. They know. Everyone knows. So what? Where does it say that Kabbalah's Hamitzvah means that they're going to keep it? It's like, you know, we dive, sometimes we daven. We start davening. We don't, we don't, we're, we're, we say the words. Like, we don't know where we are, what we're saying. He says, say, basically, Kabbalah's Hamitzvah says, you just got to say the word. It's a ceremony. You just have to say the word. I want to I make this clear. He's not saying drum should believe in a drum. That's not where he's going. He's going, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. He does not have to have a mind he's going to keep it. Kabbalah just means I accept that God has authority, but I may not listen. I accept that there's 600% of it. 100% of the 613 minutes. Will I keep it? That's, that's my business. But I accept that there's a God over me, and I have to li- I should listen. Well, you know what? I may not. That's amazing. That's amazing. Exactly. So, <laughs> I, I, and he goes, and he brings proofs. He brings proofs. He says, look at the Jews. They were at Hart Sinai, and what happened right afterwards? They did the angle. How, how firm were the Jews when they accept the Torah? Look, they did the angle right afterwards. Ah, you see their Kabbalah submissions wasn't too much either. I couldn't believe when I read this. He says, he says, look. He says the other proof. He says, look, I don't understand. We don't tell the, the same thing I said before. We don't tell the ger all the mitzvahs. We don't sit there with the ger tell him all the mitzvahs. If, if he needs to keep all the mitzvahs, tell them all. Clearly, you don't tell him some. So clearly it's just procedural. He says a good riot. He says, the Gemara says, ger ma koshal is Game are very, uh, are, are comparable in su- some gerim, like saras. It's not good for the Jews. Very different interpretations. It could be the other way. 
But one interpretation, which is the standard interpretation, is Gairim usually slack. They slack, it's difficult for them, it's not easy for them, and they revert to the old ways. So what does Gemara say? We know Gairim reverts to the old ways. So it says Rebazil. The Gemara says we know this. So basically, we know when the guy says he's going to do Kabbalah's mitzvahs, we know that he's going to revert and slack. So we see from here that the whole Kabbalah's mitzvahs has nothing to do with key mitzvahs. It's, a, it's just words. Say after me. That's it. You don't have to mean it. And I don't say you don't have to mean it. You don't have to mean that you're going to keep it. You just got to mean that you do the God. And Kabbalah means that you accept that there is this concept. Amazing. Amazing. This is Rebbe Zil. And now, to end off, the Micha Shleima and Ramesha know that there is this Shita. But they say, what, what is your purpose? What is the purpose of doing this? Okay, Abazil, again, no one, this is an outlier shita, a very outlier shita. Kemat, no, no one is willing to deal with Abazil's shita, except for the Rabbanit. When you go to the, I don't, I don't myself personally understand the Rabbanit world. I don't understand. It seems to me it's not a cohesive one view a standard view for everyone. I'm reading, I'm reading the, lit- the, the stories. So, in the 1980s, they set up these massive, uh, basically, uh, manufacturing Bezdins that they would just bring in a lot, a lot of Russians and they would say, repeat after me! I swear allegiance to America. No, I swear allegiance to God. John Mikva. Sorry, sorry. Meaning they relied on a Brazil and they accepted the, they, 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 they did these mass conversions. Then you read, there was a, there was a, uh, a lady, same story, who got married to one of these, uh, whoever it was, Russians, and he ran away, and the uh, Bezin said, oh, you don't need, that Gairus, that was a joke. You don't need to get, that guy's not Jewish. It's the same Rabbanut. It's a, a little bit of understanding, the way the Rabbanut is, it's autonomy. Every, every Bezin does whatever they want. It's not, there's not one sing, there's not one singular, there's not one view amongst everyone. It's not, nothing standard. So one person will say, a okay, care, one person will say you're a guy. So that's my understanding of, of what's going on there. Could be I'm wrong. Be to the main. Is it a case? We gotta end off over here. Like I said, this is a voluminous amount of material. I haven't touched even a teeny bit. I just wanna end off over here. Ursula Orbach called the Brazil up on the phone. Brazil, you have your shita, very difficult to understand. You could, you could do Kabbalah without Kiyam. But why are you doing this? What are you doing this for? What, what, what are you doing this for? What are you doing this for? What, what, what's the point? To bring people in, to become Jews that won't keep anything. What's the point? And it's like, you're even naiver. Shalom Azam and Orbach says, you're right, Rebbe You're wrong. But if you're right, you're even naiver. What are you doing? This guy, this listen naiver for a guy too, by the way. This listen naiver for a guy. So you have this guy. He was a happy, happy camper. You made him into a... Jew, he's not keeping anything. He's gonna go up to, uh, to Shemayim. Oi! Didn't keep Shabbos, didn't keep anything. What did you do, Abazil? What did you do by making this guy a Jew? What did you do? You messed up his life. You, you, you ruined him. So you're over the evil, if you are right. Again, he holds, he's wrong. But they're not, he's not a, he's, But in your world, in your worldview, Abazil says back, no, no. I'm, I'm looking globally. I'm looking about thousands of Jew, Russian Jews that came here. They're gonna all. It's clear like day they're going to marry into people who are real, who are short Jewish. Their kids will be messed up. There'll be amazing amount of intermarriage. I'm thinking about this boy who's going to marry this girl anyway. Because if the Orthodox rabbi ain't doing it, the Reform rabbi is about to, is going to get a, a get a, 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 a pay hike, right? It's it's happening. This is this is an inevitability. There's going to be intermarriage. So Rizal says, let's try to do what we can to at least they're Jewish and hopefully their kids, he says it's black and white he says B'nai Haman are learning in B'nai Brak at least maybe their kids will become uh, better Jews than they were so Rabbi Zil has this universal outlook and Rosham Zalman says in more, more particular but be it as it may according to 90% of the of the, of the, of the Kreinim, with all your good intentions, Rebbe it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Because there was no Kabbalah Samitzvah. 
just doesn't work. So whatever you're, you know, whatever you're trying to say Klai Yisrael is, it just doesn't work. But even if it does work, we can still, I can't get involved, we can go nitty gritty. Is it something you should do to save Klai Yisrael? Or something that you shouldn't do? The Sharman Zaman says, well, saving, you're not saving anyone. <laughs> and, but I hear Brazil, I hear he's coming from. It, the hundred thousand of, of Russians, they're all gonna, they're gonna marry, eventually they're gonna marry into the regular, in the society that's not only Russian. Again, I'm not disparaging Russians. I don't mean Russians. <laughs> I know some of the most famous people are Russians. And I don't mean, I'm just giving the, what, the, what, what, what the Matisse is on the ground. So clearly they're going to ma marry normative Jews. So don't you want to do something about that? Try to... Get, so that's, that, that's where everyone is coming from uh, uh, somewhere else. Rabbi Yisai. So Rabbi Yisai, when the Orthodox rabbis would write to Ramosha about these things, he would say, I can't tell you what to do because he knew the pressures that these Orthodox rabbis were under, but you should just know this is not a good thing. Ramosha never a thousand percent said it's a guy. You have to get a vibe. It depends who he's talking to, who he's writing to, but you get where he's going. He doesn't, he really holds it probably going, but he wouldn't say black and white a hundred percent and he wouldn't tell the rabbi a thousand percent, don't do it. Uh, but he pretty much said, don't do it. Okay, everybody, Sai, like I said, we didn't deal with issue two at all about even if she becomes a girl, you can't marry her anyway. And we didn't really deal with issue one a hundred percent either. There's a lot more to deal with over here. But next week, hopefully, we'll continue in this. Okay.